Blue Reflection. It's a game I've been playing for hours on end and I also don't know why it's called that. Blue Reflection was a game developed by Gust in 2017. Perhaps you might recognize them for their work on Knights of Azure? No, I did! Blue Reflection is a JRPG where you do turn-based combat in an alternate world as a magical girl and where you build and strengthen friendships in the real world. It, along with Atelier Furis and Knights of Azure 2, was the final game in Gust's beautiful girls' festival project. And I did not bother to do any more research past that. Now, I wouldn't be surprised after hearing the description of this game if you thought it sounded similar to the Persona series, as that's what I thought of at first. I would describe this game as the great value edition of Persona, just with an all-female cast and that nagging feeling in the back of your head that if anyone saw you playing this, they would wonder why you're not just playing Persona instead. Blue Reflection falls in the journey of Hinako Shirai, a former ballet dancer turned regular high school student after a knee injury rendered her incapable of dancing ever again. No more fame. No more boy toys. <laughs> You're right, no one cares about that. And most importantly, no more money! That's right! Along with her ballet career, her lucrative income has been tossed out the window. Now Hinako is left to shuffle the halls of hell, surrounded by mediocrity and hormone-bred ignorance. Welcome to high school. You'll never guess how many new English square words I learned from watching Kizuna Aichan last night. Like, the two of them have been dating for only 15 years, and out of the blue, the guy tries to kiss her. Like, can you possibly be any more direct? So I've taken out Pika, and my skin looks amazing. This place will be the death of me. Now, I wouldn't dismiss this place too soon, Hinako. Sometimes people need a fresh start in their lives. A fresh start in a faraway place you have no connection to. And those who would do you harm feel like they are a million miles away. Plus, it must feel nice not having other students leave razors in your shoe locker for a change, huh, Hinako? <laughs> Now I gotta start buying shaving blades again. While making her way to the teacher's lounge, Hinako gets stopped by a former middle school classmate, Sanai. Sanai is a timid girl who had admired Hinako for her ballet prowess. She gets excited to meet Hinako again, but I'm not gonna lie, uh, things get kind of awkward between the two of them. Oh, Hinako! You're Hinako, right? This is so exciting! We get to be in high school together! This is like a dream come true! I used to watch your ballet performances all the time. You were such an inspiration. I wanted to be just like you. Oh, how embarrassing. I'm rambling, aren't I? You probably got places to be in uh, Hinako? Hinako? He <gasps> oh, no. Is it my hair? Is my hair acting up again? It's moving. I just, I, I finally get to see you again and then this happens? And now I freaked you out. No, no. I'm yes, just, I have. Usually, I'm used to seeing tapeworms live inside the body. It just caught me off guard. I'm so embarrassed. Yuki was right. I should fall down a flight of stairs. No, no. I mean, if you could just get a, a tattoo on the side of your face, no one would even notice your freak monster hair. You don't need to be so kind to me. As Hinako is reminded of the benefits of characters having short hair in video games, Sanai's behavior becomes more erratic as she bellows out a maniacal laughter and begins emitting a smoky aura from her person for seemingly no reason at all. Unsettled by the sudden change of character, Hinako must act fast if she's to get away from this maniacal fangirl. Uh, listen, thanks, but I'm not into vape culture. Honestly, is our society so sanitized we're too scared to embrace a little nicotine poisoning? You know, it's funny how out of all the kids in school, I was the one you chose to talk to. While Hinako contemplates on how she can pass Sanai off onto the other students, Hinako is magically transported to a mysterious world with weird jagged pillars, glowing orbs, and floating moons. Oh my! It looks just like the real world! with less homeless people. As Hinako is in shock over her sun change in surroundings, a strange looking monster attacks her and sends her tumbling into a nearby stream. Just when all hope seems lost, and when Hinako finally accepts that she won't live long enough to see Mira finish berserk, Hinako hears the callings of two young women in her head. The two mysterious girls explain to Hinako that the ring that just appeared on her finger can transform her into a magical girl, similar to what I am telling you 
you right now. Congratulations, Hinako, on your new promotion from regular high school girl to magical girl. Your promotion comes with one gaudy standard issue, quote unquote, magical sailor fuku uniform, completely impervious to rips, tears, and sweat stains. Don't forget this outfit provides you with little to no actual combat advantages or camouflage and should really only be used for the purposes of cosplaying and or wrestling. She'd make a great heel. Unfortunately for Hinako, all this is coming at her super fast and doesn't really have enough time to process what's going on. Great job, Hinako! You've awoken your magical girl abilities! I'm sure you must have a lot of questions for us. Yeah. Does this outfit come in black? <laughs> Silly Hinako! You're much too skinny to wear the goth magical girl outfit. Now you can use your newfound abilities to defeat that monster. In heels? Are you crazy? Don't worry, you look good in him. That's not what I- Also, I'm this place heals all wounds from the real world, so you won't have to worry about your bad knee when you're fighting. Pretty neat, huh, Hinako? Well, this world hasn't healed my raging cynicism because walking on grass in high heels is physically impossible. Monster Seer, go kill him. Save the head, please. Ugh. Luckily for Hinako, she is able to defeat the monster with little trouble. While she is mulling over her newfound abilities, a mysterious light falls into her hands that contains the thoughts of Sanai. Unfortunately, Hinako is unable to comprehend fully what this light is before she finds herself back in the real world where seemingly no time has passed at all. What happened to her? Was it real? Is she really a magical girl? Hinako needs some time to process her thoughts, but that girl Sanai is still saying words. Hinako thinks fast to distance herself from her. Sanai, I only allow people who can watch all three of the Hobbit movies at the same time to be my friend. Oh, I bet I can do that. Well, this has been one hectic morning for Hinako, and she hasn't even been to her class yet. All this magical girl crap can wait as Hinako needs to get to home room and introduce herself to her classmates. Hopefully she can push all this stuff out of her head and make a good first impression on her fellow peers. Oh, who am I kidding? It's high school. Who cares? And that is why Waluigi should never be in Smash. Thank you. Oh, you suck! You after her introduction, Hinako goes to sit in one of the empty seats in the back, and to her surprise, two girls appear out of nowhere and welcome her to the school. Yeah, they can just appear like that. I wasn't looking up anything NSFW on Twitter. It's just a, the people that I follow like to retweet that stuff. It's not me. Anyway, so these two girls, Yuzu and Lime, are the same girls that were talking to Hinako in the other world. They seem like they're nice enough girls. I mean, they said hello to me when they very well could have made fun of my my bug eyes or my my blood type. Like I would have done. Yes, I think we're gonna get along just- Sensei, I nominate Hinako for student council president. I second that nomination. Oh no, Tilda! Um, don't, don't mind her. She's still getting used to her powers. Oh no, Hinako! Everyone knows that student body council is a massive waste of time. Oh no, you're not gonna have time anymore to watch Panty and Stocking reruns on Boomerang! Those witches only nominated you so they wouldn't get chosen. Quick, do something! Sensei, I can't be the president. I'm already the president of another club. Oh? What club is that? Uh, the Go Home Club. Hinako, that's not a school-recognized organization. Who are you to tell me what the school recognizes as my religion? After receiving detention for faking a religion, Hinako confronts Yuzu and Lime on the rooftop. There, Hinako will get to the bottom of why they volunteered her for president. Because, darling, please, none of this stuff matters for crap after high school. This is actually kind of surprising. I thought you would ask us questions like, was it your voices I heard in that strange world? How did you two appear suddenly in those empty seats next to me? We didn't think volunteering you for club president would upset you so much. It was supposed to be a way for us to get to know you better and get you involved with the school. Do I look like I'm filled with school spirit? Well, you are just a one-track mind, aren't you? While Hinako rationally explains the merits of ignoring all school-based activities, their conversation is put on hold when another character interrupts them. Reen is the star athlete of the tennis club, but what she doesn't realize is that she has just forced her way into a very important conversation. You just don't do that to Hinako. Oh, look who it is. Serena's come to grace us with her presence. How you doing, Serena? <laughs> you know, just because I play tennis doesn't mean I'm anywhere close to being one of the greatest female players of all time. You're right. Serena is a champion that would destroy you just by looking at you. It would be irresponsible of me to address you as someone you couldn't even hope to become like. I don't... 
I don't mind being called Serena. Of course! No problem, Serena! So the thing with Reen is that she's got a bit of a boy problem on her hands. I ran into her several times and basically her character can be boiled down to girl like guy, girl want guy, girl won't talk to guy. Guy should read mind. I just can't stop thinking about him! He's so wonderful and perfect! But what if he doesn't like me? Oh, you poor thing. I imagine you go home every day and watch AMVs of couples kissing to the seal song Kiss from a Rose. <gasps> How did you know, Hina-chan? You understand me? Oh, no. So Reen divulges to the girls every detail about this boy on the tennis team that she has a crush on. And I do mean every detail. While Yuzu and Lime try to at least look supportive, Hinako contemplates whether or not she would be alright if she jumped off the roof of a three-story building. He sometimes comes by to train the younger students and we chat then. Oh, and sometimes we text each other. Yeah, you're halfway there to getting married. I want to talk to him more, but he's so busy. I don't want to bother him. Yeah, no guy ever wanted a girl to talk to him out of the blue. Just stop all conversations with him. That'll show him you value his personal space. I'm not even sure if he likes someone else or not. What if he already has a girlfriend? Oh, Serena, if he does, it would be better for you to get hit by a bus and to go on living. I'm thinking of confessing my love to him. If you do, try to confess using some sort of tennis pun like me and you love all. And maybe not that one. That's not very good. Oh, how about let's you and I set this game of love. Cause we're a match. Okay, that's not bad, kid. Hey, you two need to start paying attention to what she's saying. Oh, and you were? Of course not. That's why I'm telling you to pay attention. I think you should be telling that to Reen. She can't even tell how gay her crush is. Reen's such a sweet girl. I can't bring myself to tell her. All right, we'll just tell her he's doing the cloth. Ooh, let's. What if I send him a text message telling him how I feel? No, moron. You don't start a relationship through a text message. That's strictly for breaking up. Oh, I don't know what to do. What if I say something stupid when confessing to him? What if he says no and I embarrass myself? Hinako, what should I do? Hinako! 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 Holy crap, how dense can one person be? It's like I'm acting snide towards a brick wall. Okay, you know what? You're no longer Serena. You're now Maria Sharapova. Wh why? Because you won't stop making noise! Tennis references, everybody! Unfortunately, Hinako's insensitive, but not unwarranted comment caused Rain to fall into despair and emit a bizarre aura similar to Sanai. Hinako, do something! You're right. Sharapova, please don't be like this. If the teachers see you with that aura above your head, they'll think you're smoking on the rooftop, and we'll get in trouble too by association. Hinako! She has a point. Just hold out your ring towards her! <laughs> so then Hinako, Yuzu, and Lime are teleported into a strange world. Yuzu and Lime seem to know an awful lot about what this world is, and lo and behold, these two were magical girls all along. Lucky! Surely these girls must know a lot about the monsters, the power of magic, and the purpose of this world. At least now Hinako can get the answers that she so desperately craves. No, you can't wear sneakers instead of high heels! How can you possibly bring hope and wonder to the hearts of young girls everywhere if you're a magical girl that wears sneakers? The girls locate the fragment belonging to Reen. What's this fragment, you ask? Well, essentially the fragment shows Hinako the inner thoughts of whoever it belongs to. Hinako basically has to empathize with the person's thoughts and it gives that person the resolve to face their problems head on. They also get a free ring out of the deal. Or a trip to the pawn shop, Hinako tries to wrap her head around what this all means. Okay, when I empathize with a person's fragment, that person then feels like they can take on any challenge. So basically this is like glorified hypnosis. That is grossly oversimplifying it. Think of the subject change in character as them reading a self-help book. And, you know, it actually working. Change uh, of character. Does it really matter? Help. Anyways, uh, does this all make sense, Hinako? In layman's terms, we can provide a way for troubled people to overcome their worries and fears and instill them with a sense of con... <laughs> <fid -dance. laughs> Yuzu, Lime, let's start a business. Hey! Once Hinako stabilizes Reen's fragment, the girls return to the real world. There, Reen has now calmed down, but her problem has not fully resolved. Hinako must empathize with Reen one last time. Reen, 
Um, I want to give you my opinion on how you should get together with your crush. For real this time. Hinako-chan. <gasps> Pee on a shoe locker. The other girls need to know that he's your property. While Yuzu and Lime are satisfied with the good deed they did for Rin, Hinako wants to convince the two of them to start a business with her. A business centered around using their magical girl abilities to solve problems for others and bring peace and love to the world. You know, if money's involved. Hinako has already begun working out the details. No, 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 it's very simple. We operate our magical girl services in a mysterious world that is outside the jurisdiction of any government body. Therefore, all profits we receive are not taxable. Oh. Wait, is that how that works? So what you're saying is that the time of the benevolent magical girl fighting for freedom and justice is over and that we should be using our powers for personal gain. If you're good at something, never do it for free. <sighs> I don't think that sounds like a good idea at all. We can't even prove that there even exists an alternate world. Exactly. There's no traceable evidence left behind of our involvement. It could never be proven in a court of law. I like the money idea. Mm -hmm. Guess it wouldn't hurt to have a little extra spending money. Uh, just promise me this won't get out of hand. Lime, you can trust me. Now on to other business. Do you two know of any natural substance in the other world that can be used as a narcotic? With their newly found business now up off the ground, word quickly gets around the school that Hinako, Yuzu, and Lime are problem solvers who know how to deliver never-before-seen results. The girls are soon scouted out by Shihori, the alluring admirer of all things beautiful. Yeah, her. Who wants to hire the girls to solve her problem? The girls meet with Shihori to discuss business. Well, Miss Shihori, you're in luck. Our basic package includes performing one favor for you, but we have a special today. For a meager 20% more, we can now throw in an extra friendship ring, and you can make fun of how short Lime is to her face. Speaking of faces, you have a very pretty one. Uh, th thank you. Now about your decision. What kind of makeup do you use? I don't. Now about your decision. Oh? M. J. That spells omk. What kind of woman are you who doesn't wear makeup? One who doesn't put much value in fleeting appearances. Mm -mm -mm -mm. No, 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 no. This won't do. We're going to put makeup on you and you're going to be forced to look even more beautiful. To the bathroom. Hey, hey, It'll be stop fun. It. We'll what, do it together. Go. We'll look like twinsies. Get your hands Ew, off you're me, more muscular than you Come on, like. Lime, let's go watch. Really George is as short as me. Why am I the one who gets made fun of? You know, Shihori will give you credit. It never would have occurred to me that the first step in making one look her best is to run headfirst into a public bathroom. Just think of yourself as a diamond in the rough. How do you feel? I'm a heart stopper. Wait, does she actually look any different? Ah, whatever. All right, well, for hiring us to act as one of your makeup models, the total cost of our services comes out to 8,000 yen. We'll send you an invoice via email. You guys are the best. I hope we can do this again. Bye-bye. Pleasure doing business with you. Wait, was that really what she hired us for? I have no idea what she was going to hire us for. This is easy! Despite an awkward situation with Shihori, the girls' business soon takes off, with multiple students hiring the girls. No situation too unusual or task too grindy for them to handle. Seriously, in game terms, it's like defeat X amount of a particular bad guy or collect X amount of a particular item to stave off thoughts of suicide. But the girls' hard work has a lasting impact on their clients, an impact that they will feel for years to come. For better or for worse. Attention all students. The school has received a serious complaint from a nearby school regarding the behavior of some of our students. The shoe lockers of neighboring campuses are not public bathrooms. We shouldn't even have to make this announcement, but any more offenses will be uh, punishable by immediate expulsion. Youth. However, as their success continues to grow, new challenges come to light as they try to keep a low profile from school faculty. Look, I've been thinking. While no one would be able to prove we do work in another world, if the school finds out we are conducting business on school property, we could potentially be facing some serious consequences. Indeed. Actually, I've already been preparing for such a scenario. I would like to propose bringing Shihori on board to join our team. Oh, you can't be serious. No. Not her. Why? Shihori enjoys nothing more than being the center of attention. We make her the face of our operations, and she'll be the perfect fall girl in case we are ever compromised. Plus, she's too dumb to defend her thing for herself. And you think she can be controlled? 
I got this girl to pay me money for a service I should have been paying her for. She can't be controlled. I don't know about this. You're going to need to convince me that she's as absolutely dumb as you say she is. My favorite part in Indigo Prophecy was where his entire apartment attacked him. It was so crazy! She's perfect. She's a godsend. All right. All right, yeah. Yeah, I know. I'm ignoring how the game plays again, aren't I? Heaven forbid I forget to bore you with every little minutia of how the battle system plays out. Did you know that if you leave Hinako idle for long enough, she starts talking? Also, did you know that if you eject the disc, the game stops working? Oh, sorry, uh, I could be spending time talking about the skill upgrade mechanic, huh? But what we really need to talk about is Hinako's sick data plan, also known as her parents. I kid. Uh, however, I find it strange that the game establishes Hinako as being completely cell phone illiterate. I mean, all the characters are like, What? You don't know how to app? So why isn't Hinako good with technology? Uh, dude, she's just a ballet dancer who busted her knee. As far as I know, she's not some kind of grizzled Yakuza who's been behind bars for the past 25 years. Although with how I treat apps, I might as well be one. Bring back AOL Instant Messenger! But the worst part is trying to read the text messages. As soon as you open a conversation with one of your classmates, the game just speeds through all the text and Oh, okay, slow, stop! If the speed of your texts is on par with a Twitch chat, you might want to dial it back just, just a little bit. Then again, I doubt I'm missing much of anything important. I'm sure it'll be an enriching experience to take the time out of my day to hear what she Hori has to say. We need to talk. <laughs> I don't think we need to talk right now. No, 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 no. I you want to tell me why you thought it was necessary for Shihori to have my social media information? Was that wrong? R wrong? Wrong? One hour, 47 minutes ago, she posts a picture of a messy bed with the caption of Bye bye, safe haven, hello school, lol, hashtag Mondays. One hour, 23 minutes ago, she posts a picture of a stuffed animal wearing a hat with the caption of Ready for a day in the sun, lol, hashtag, uh, lol. Three minutes ago, it's a picture of a bowl of rice. Let me repeat that. A bowl? of rice. All these pictures were from this morning. How is showing me pictures of food or any of these other pictures supposed to enrich my life? It's just how things are, Hinako. Us kids just want everyone to look at us. Yeah, nothing says I'm a goddess. Worship me like, like pointing a camera at the bathroom mirror. What's supposed to impress me in this picture? Her? Her phone or all the beauty products she's hoarding on the bathroom counter? I think it's intended to be multi-layered. You know, to impress both men and women. Oh, look at this. Look at this new post. Why is she smelling her armpit? Uh, that's called dabbing. She's a drug user? All right, I'm pretty tapped out. One more character before I finish this video off. Uh, by the way, this isn't even close to the end of the game. You know, I feel it's important to keep my own video making tradition alive by quitting a game before I've even finished it. While wandering the halls trying to remember which locker she left Shihori in, Hinako is embraced by the pleasant sounds coming from a nearby piano. Curious of where it's coming from, Hinako walks up to the door leading to the- It's so wrong! Why can't I play this stupid piece of junk? Stop mocking me! Just you wait till I come back with the matches, because I'm going to make your life a living! You're not going to tell the teachers, are you? And how would it benefit me to tell the teachers without first trying to extort something out of you? Really? I guess you're not such a bad person after all. Um... Yeah. Alright, so this character here, Fumio, is just your typical child prodigy who is a little messed up in the head. Oh look, she verbalizes all her thoughts thinking no one can hear her. How cute. Tell us everything about your political beliefs. But this child prodigy just so happens to be a piano player who is in a creative slump. Fumio explains that her piano skills have been suffering as of late. Seeing a potential client in Fumio, Hinako's business senses take over and begins advertising the company to her. If you're having trouble playing the piano, why not hire our company, Shihori's Big Idea, to help you with your problem? Here's our business card. Perhaps you've heard of us? No job is too big or too specific for us to handle. Oh, you're a pianist as well, Hinako? Not exactly. 
We at Chihori's Big Idea offer a service similar to hypnosis that rejuvenates your mind and gives you the determination to take on any obstacle in your path. Wait, I think I've heard of you. Aren't you the girl that got that tennis player suspended for convincing her to graffiti a neighboring school's shoe locker? Not for that, no. So how does this work exactly? Simply tell us the problem you're experiencing and how you would like to resolve it. I need tension. Burning enthusiasm and overwhelming urgency that finally gives way to blissful ecstasy! Can you help me with that? Okay. I know a girl that owns a tennis racket. I... what? I don't understand. I, I told her I played the piano. Could it be possible I was not clear? I know a girl that has a lot of syringes. Oh, of course! Party hard, die young! Just like all musicians! Quick, what else do you suggest? I know a janitor that has a closet. And that is why I locked our new client in the closet. How is that supposed to help her? Who said anything about helping her? Hinako, what is wrong with you? Oh, that's rich coming from the two people whose first words to me were to kill monsters I had never seen before. Hinako, that's mean. You're still mad about the high heels, aren't you? Of course I am! And so, Shihori's Big Idea Incorporated, a proud member of the Fortune 500,000, would go on to retrieve Fumio's missing fragment. While everything worked out this time, the group decides it would be in the best interest of the company to establish a set of moral guidelines. Guidelines each member would have to follow when consulting with future customers. But what if our clients ask us to break their knees? Hinako, that's never going to happen! The girls return to Fumio, her confidence restored, and her spirit rejuvenated. As a show of goodwill and courtesy, the girls give Fumio a ring, which Fumio will treasure every day from now on. Aww, it's cute how you call this piece of chicken wire a ring. That's adorable. Yeah, I knew you'd like it. Thank you, bye-bye. Also, Lime, I like how you being so short is what makes you so cute. Ah! Hey, you can't say that to her. That was not included with the package you paid for. You know, I envy Fumio. Why's that? I always wanted to learn how to play the piano. I guess I'm just jealous of her talents. Really? I'm jealous of artists. They can draw their own pornography. Shihori, I thank God every day that we get to share the same homeroom. Will the girls' business ever get shut down by the teachers? Will Reen ever be allowed back onto school property? Will Lime ever get a growth spurt? Why is there a photo booth called the Q the what? When will people finally realize that Hinako is genuinely an awful person? I, I don't freaking know. I didn't beat this game. Hey, I want to tell you something. You're my hero because you watched this video all the way to the end. So thank you very much for doing that. But let's also give a big special thanks to the following people because without them, this video would not be possible. I'd like to thank Pandora herself who played Hinako, Kiki Riki who played Yuzu, Dekana Baby 12 who played Reen, and Uma who played Sanai and Fumio. You can find a link to all their pages in the description down below. And I'd also like to thank my dear mother who played the teacher. Hey, hey, be nice to her! Mobs are cool! Anyways, if you'd like to see more of my videos, you could check out my video on Knights of Azure or perhaps the JoJo Bizarre Adventure Super Famicom game. I recommend the JoJo game because that's one of my favorites. Anyways, bye bye! Take care! Video's over. Or is it? Seriously, though. I look old enough to be a high schooler. Right? No.